We're asking the state of Tennessee, in conjunction with its 1996 bicentennial celebration, has requested that each county in Tennessee participate in significant and meaningful manner. And whereas, as part of their particip participation, each county has been invited to provide to the state bicentennial officials a time capsule containing items representative of local interest. And whereas the Campbell County Bicentennial Committee, composed of Lee Asbury, Adrian Baird, Harris Chapman, Debbie Cole, Miller McDonald, Marshall McGee, Shirley Rogers, Betty Snodderly, <coughs> Tom Steiner, and Joanne Watts, have carried forth their responsibility in a most diligent and thoughtful manner, selecting artifacts and historical materials reflective of our heritage and reviewing and selecting items that represent today's culture. And whereas this time capsule will be buried in the Bicentennial Park with plans for future Tennessee citizens to remove and open it in 100 years, thus sharing our history and today's lifestyle with the citizens of tomorrow. And whereas we deem this participation to be important and beneficial to the citizens of Campbell County today and for future generations to come, therefore, by the passage of this resolution, on this, the 18th day of December, 1995, we offer our support and participation in this event and direct the Campbell County Bicentennial Committee to proceed and complete this worthy endeavor. We also invite all Campbell Countyans to join with us in celebrating Tennessee's Bicentennial. I make a motion we approve. A second. Motion by Jack Alexander to approve. I'll second. Seconded by Ray Burns and Glenn Lefter. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a roll call vote. Madam Secretary, call the roll. How long would it be for that to do 100 years. We will be that far. Mr. Chairman, is there any chance we get some of those people put in the capital right now? What do you think? signature first and pass it among you for your signatures, please.
but let's call it a happy new year to you in 1990 or 2096 although we presume you probably won't open this and start analyzing it until about mid-year 2096. Let me introduce this fine group of Campbell Countyans. I would tell you that these, these are normal people but that will be for you to judge and you will have a particularly easy vantage point from which to make that assessment because history is the best judge. I can tell you that we've had a great time doing it. This is Miss Betty Snodderly. Betty's our Chamber of Commerce Administrator and has done an awful lot to put this together. Incidentally, we're not the Campbell County Pro Procrastinators Club. There's yet an hour and 15 minutes remaining before the deadline when we stuff it in. And we feel like we're particularly organized. Some of the paraphernalia that will go into the capsule is what you might, uninformed, call clutter on the table. You won't call it clutter after you've had a chance to make the proper analysis. We regard it as your treasure. But from Betty to Marshall McGee, in addition to the historical aspect of this, he's particularly representing the town of Kerryville. This is my good friend, Mark Wilson, coordinator for the Total Quality Partnership uh, effort that will be a large presentation in this capsule that you will enjoy going through. It means a lot to us at this point in time. This is my good friend, Judge Lee Asbury, whom you will see a great deal of in the video we have prepared for you. The judge and I had the pleasure of being the narrators as Adrian Baird on the end, whom I'll get to in a few minutes, was the producer of that video. Incidentally, to let you know our sense of timing at this point in, in what you'll call history at this point in our time, the judge is on a brief leave from the upstairs courtroom where he's hearing the criminal case so that we can make a matter of record this last little effort. Uh, judge Asbury also has put in there a uh, invaluable document, a letter, epistle, pictorial, to the rec, outdoor, and sports lovers a century from now, and he gives it a, a unique, delightfully unique perspective as one who has spent a life outdoors and promoted uh, that sort of thing, not only for now, but for posterity. Shirley Rogers, has taken care of interviewing some school children, uh, the Lady of the Year, others to give you a perspective of those lifestyles. Shirley also just finished uh, chairing the most spectacular Christmas parade that Campbell County has had and the first night one. We hope that you'll still be having Christmas parades when the time comes around. Joanne Watts, Director of Tourism for the lovely city of Jellico. There'll be a large portion of that on the pictorial. Joanne is also representing the city of Jellico in this effort as we compile the history. And Adrian Baird, one of our native sons who, like so many of us in my era, spent out, were born and raised here, educated here, spent our lives elsewhere and then returned here in retirement with a richness and diversity of skills to share with Campbell County. Adrian is a teacher, governmental expert, historian, recently relocated to Campbell County, a county asset, and has been very, very helpful in the, in the compilation and preparation of this time capsule. Three other members of the committee, not present at this point, but will be here in a few minutes for the stuffing, probably, are Miller McDonald, our historian, county historian, Debbie Cole, a recent uh, new resident of Campbell County, who has involved herself uh, very busily in helping us with the preparation, and Arvis Chapman, superintendent of our schools. Again, I hope that you enjoy the product that we've prepared as much as we have enjoyed preparing it for you. One last thing. Perhaps if there is a theme 
to our method, it would be that there is as much fun in the search as there is in the find. So we're not spoon feeding you. Some of the meaning we leave to your analysis. To you, in 2096, from all of us, we love you and we hope we've made you proud. Good morning to you Campbell Countyans in the year of 2096. I'm Tom Steiner, Campbell County Executive. Campbell County Executives don't normally dress this way, but it's 12 degrees this morning. I'm standing on the steps of the Campbell County Courthouse in Jacksboro, Tennessee. I'm going to be joined today by uh, Judge Lee Asbury, Adrian Baird, and others, and we're going to take you on a scenic tour of Campbell County. We're going to view our beautiful mountains, our beautiful lakes, some of our residences, some of our towns. We're going to show you the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's 12 degrees here this morning, and we're all dressed appropriately. We're very, very pleased to be able to share life as it is today with you, and we hope that you enjoy our efforts. We've just left the Campbell County Courthouse. We're in Judge Lee Asbury's pickup truck, and it itself is a classic that I hope you enjoy in 100 years from now. And my last, we're en route to Norris Dam to start at the southern end of the county and travel through our beautiful county to the north. My introductory comment said that we'd show you the good, the bad, and the ugly, and we might as well stop and look at the ugly on the way down. The way we manage solid waste is changing next year, uh, year uh, two, uh, 1996. This is one of nine what we call convenience centers, which are nothing more than trash dump off points from which we collect the trash and take it to a landfill. Our goal next year is to reduce that by at least 25%. These centers will be upgraded to each have a permanent structure, a place to separate your trash and uh, we'll have its security fence and we'll look much better. Approaching Norris Dam State Park, but decided to show you some of the beautiful, beautiful scenery uh, created by the ice on the trees. That'll also lend credibility to our statement that it was 12 degrees here this morning. We just couldn't resist taking another shot. This is absolutely gorgeous. Typical of the scenes that this generation and several generations have enjoyed because of the diversity in our topography and in our weather. We have four very distinct seasons in this temperate climate in Campbell County. Norris Dam was the first of the TVA dams. As you folks will well know, having uh, read your Tennessee history, but it had a tremendous impact on Campbell County in the 33, 34, 35 time frame because it displaced Campbell Countyans and it displaced others in nearby counties and brought them in. And our sociology probably results more from Norris Dam than any other thing that's happened in Campbell County this century. All right, Tom and I are standing facing west at this time, and in the background you can see parts of Norris Dam and Norris Lake. Uh, Adrian's going to walk toward us, and as he does, we're going to turn and point out some more of the features regarding the lake. That is the direction of the arms and points that we believe might be of interest to you. Point one and the starting of the lake, uh, you can see to the left of your picture that it's a part of the buoy line from the marina there at Norris Dam. And as Adrian comes around, the first body of water is Cove Creek that goes from here all the way up to Caribou. You'll notice a white sign on the bank away across the lake. That's point number one on Norris Lake. And as he comes on around, uh, you will notice that uh, the river going to the right is the main Clinch River. Um, that, of course, is the, is the main body of the lake and goes for many, many miles up to the forks of the river and then up to Clinch and the Powell Boats to, 
to Highway 33 in the case of the Clanch and to Highway 25 in the case of the Pal. He's panning on around to where you can see the flags and the dam coming around now toward the power plant, uh, which is TVA's oldest power generating, at least water power generating electric plant in, in the southeastern United States. He's coming on around, you can see the, the plant itself and the, you can see the big banks of transformers and the transmission lines leaving here, going in many different directions, on down toward where the fish hatcheries used to be and things of that sort. And, and now he's beginning to come down to where you're looking down the Clinch River toward Clinton, Tennessee. It's another one of those places where the view is so spectacular and so beautiful that I'm not going to say anything else about it and let the camera do the talking. I would add, Lee, that this clinch, this section of the Clinch River provides some of the best, at this point in time, some of the best trout fishing in the eastern United States as well. Also, as a point of interest, there are a lot of, of our local aging citizens that take a lot of pride in their work in this dam, typical of those is my father, who's, who worked here the entire three years, and my father, Emmett Steiner, who worked here the entire three years that the dam was under construction and takes great pride in the fact that he had a part in this. Many, many of the Campbell Countyans will speak of this uh, accomplishment with great pride. Might make comment as Adrian brings the camera back uh, up the river and back to where the dam and lake come back and focus. Uh, you notice the bare banks around the lake. Uh, one of the main problems with the Headwaters Lake that's primarily used for flood control and secondarily for power generation is this winter drawdown every year uh, causes uh, rather unsightly banks. And of course in the spring uh, and early summer, the water goes all the way back up to the woods and this particular phenomenon uh, sort of uh, detracts from the ability of fish to produce and that sort of thing, and, and TVA's water use practices are a source of both pride and controversy depending on whether you like the power or whether you like the fish. But in any event, uh, it's, it's plain that here at the last of December 1995 that the water is a way down. Another thing we might mention but not get a chance to see is the Norris Dam State Park. We in Campbell County are extremely lucky. We've spent quite a bit of time talking about Cove Lake System and the Cove Lake State Park. We have three, I have no idea in a hundred years what the park systems will be. As we speak, uh, national legislatures are gripping our Congress and our Senate are, are coming to, are, are laboring over what the future of park recreational facilities and park systems will be. We're extremely lucky in Campbell County to have three. We have Norris Dam or Norris uh, Park, Cove Lake Park, and Indian Mountain Park in Jellicoe. All right, we're looking directly at the face of the quarry uh, from which the rock that went into the dam was taken. It's our understanding that it was at least one of the factors in deciding where to site the dam was the availability of this almost pure limestone to use in construction. Um, I have no idea how many millions of yards of material were removed, but uh, it certainly would be considerable. We've come from the dam around to the quarry site and are actually looking at the back or upstream side of the dam. You can see a portion of the marina and of course can notice from here also how low the water is at this time of year. Um, this is, uh, is the same view that the person working in this quarry back in 1934 or 5 would have had, uh, except the dam wouldn't be completed. They would be looking down into the river bottom. I'll let the camera do the talking from here on. There is one other feature. You can see a large electric transmission line leaving this power plant site. And of course they do in fact leave from here and go in many different directions. And this is one of TVA's most economical generating uh, points. Certainly not a typical residence, but this is one of the residents of no other significance other than one of the Campbell County families lives here. We're on the Norris Freeway coming into Lake City.
Now you will see some residences that don't look quite so well, but this is a beautiful residence in Campbell County. We're now leaving the outskirts of Lake City, headed back toward Carryville. May be interesting in a hundred years to look back and see in which county is Lake City. Right now, about 20% of it is in Campbell County, and Campbell and Anderson, along with the state of Tennessee, are discussing options of who could provide the best service and what would be best for those residents of Lake City. It's not inconceivable that uh, that portion of Lake City presently in Campbell County might not be there in a hundred years. You folks search it out and see what and when and why it happened. You're seeing the National Guard Armory. That will move within one month. We in Campbell County have one unit. It's a heavy transportation, mainly a petroleum heavy truck company that supports an armored cav regiment that has a real go-to-war mission. As a result of it, and the fact that it's going to be around in a part of the nation's defense structure for some time, we've just completed a new armory that they will move into uh, in January 1996. Now, Highway 116, looking directly at Fort Mountain, Bruce Creek to the right, and Cold Creek to the left, and the city of Carroll right at the foot of the mountain. Carroll was originally a coal camp and is now located at an interchange, uh, I believe it's 134 on I-75 and is expected to be and probably will be one of the high growth areas of the future. I would really be interested to know what it would be like in a hundred years. I certainly hope that you all enjoy it as much as we have. He has the camera panning from east to west starting at Cold Lake State Park dining room Coming around where you can see in the background the Fork Mountain, uh, Bruce Creek to the right, Cold Creek to the left. The big mountain to his left is the Cross Mountain at Caryville, and the low gap you can see in the far distance is the Wheeler Gap. The town of Caryville should be coming into view about this time. Started out to be a railroad station, wound up to be a coal camp, and is today, I suppose, a tourist attraction. Most beautiful view in the country from right here. I hope it's still here in a hundred years, though there is a question as to whether the lake will be able to survive that length of time. Its estimated age, unless something is done at this time, is 50 years. We're working hard to try to do something about it. By the time you look at this video, you will know how successful we may or may not have been. This is certainly a beautiful spot, well worth preserving. We hope it's here for you to see in a hundred years. We're now in Main Street, uh, Carryville. Judge Asbury has talked a little bit about its history and its future. Happy to report that some of the antiquity is preserved here. This uh, is vintage Caravel, as I recall it, as a child uh, some 50 years ago. This house on the right, uh, last occupied by Edith and Leslie Murray, may be the oldest house in Carival and probably is. The part of Carival that we're entering now is the part that was rebuilt after a fire in the 1940s burned out the old wooden buildings. These are the buildings that replaced uh, the old time downtown Carival. When we make this turn to the left, you'll see a vacant spot that once was the depot at a time when Caravel was this terminal end of the railroad. The, the railroad that first came in this country ended right here at Caryville, Tennessee. The main house to the right is probably an old company house. At least it's a part of the Gleason Row set of houses. It's been reconditioned and now has vinyl siding on it. Uh, from the now point of Caraville Elementary School up close, uh, 
this school is the one that replaced the old Caribou High School that was where the lake is now. It was a junior high for a good many years. I believe now that it's a one through six elementary school. In any event, it was built as a result of TVA taking the area where Cold Lake is now. And the park to my right is a new addition. The park that says Caribou Elementary is the old original building built in the late 1930s. I understand that between the time that the old building was taken and this new building was built, the school was held in the various churches here in Caribou. We're now up to the point where we're actually crossing the Cold Creek arm of Norris Lake. And you can see that we're approaching the Cold Lake State Park dining room and office complex, playground and walking trail to my left. Probably one of the most popular things in the county is to come to Cold Lake and walk. Of course, you can obviously see a huge flock of Canadian geese on the ground. This particular flock stays with us the year round. Now coming in to use the old Cold Lake office building. And these old buildings were built by the Civilian Conservation Corps back in the 30s. They're still standing and made of stone about 18 inches thick. In all probability, them or some part of them will still be here when you look at this video. Now we're now coming up on the Bruce Creek arm of the lake and the Dog Creek arm of the lake. And we're going on toward Jacksboro on the Appalachian Highway. We're entering the city of Jacksboro on the Appalachian Highway. The landmark here in the valley that's just north of the Jacksboro Courthouse that we refer to as the Eagle Bluff. Just at the foot of the Eagle Bluff, uh, there used to be a resort hotel referred to as Eagle Bluff Springs at which several different kinds or types or tastes of water uh, were all piped into a spring house and held in basins. And uh, you wouldn't believe it now, but at one time in the 20s and in that era, people came from all over this part of the country to stay at the hotel and drink the mineral water. It was said to have many miraculous medicinal qualities and a good many people signed testimonials that they had been cured of all sorts of conditions as a result of drinking the Eagle Bluff Springs water. Returning to the city of Jacksboro, and of course you will note that the city of Jacksboro is exactly one block long and it's been that way as long as I can remember Jacksboro is the uh, seat of Campbell County government. We started this tour on the courthouse steps, which is coming into your view to your left. The office is essentially on the right of town, our governmental offices, the first one being the uh, city hall. You're seeing uh, the courthouse again. Veterans Monument was just built and dedicated last year by our local veterans organization, and it's a source of pride. The second old monument has been there for years as a monument to World War I uh, veterans and casualties. Campbell County Board of Education building on your left, as I said, and the United States Post Office in the federal building now on your left. We're at Jacksboro's only traffic light and are leaving now the town of Jacksboro having been through that block. We're looking at the house in Jacksboro, Tennessee now occupied by Harry and Francis Burden. This house was erected in 1890 and is one of the oldest and certainly one of the best preserved nice homes in town. We've simply crossed the street from the uh, 1890 house that Judge Asbury described as one of the oldest houses in Campbell County, and we're entering a section that I'll call one of the, some of the newest houses in Campbell County. And the camera is coming up on an estate sitting atop a beautiful little mountain peak in the foothills of the Cumberlands. This house belongs to Haskell Ayers and is a source of pride to all of us in Campbell County that want to show people who visit that we have some uh, beautiful homes. Haskell Ayers and his wife Tommy built this house uh, and occupied it last year. Have a 
interesting diversity in Campbell County, not totally unlike some of the others. But we have a small percentage of our population that enjoy considerable wealth, live in a rather sophisticated lifestyle. We have a larger percentage of our population that live in conditions near poverty. And uh, the majority, the vast majority are somewhere in the middle of that. We enjoy a lifestyle that's modest, hardworking people that have plenty. We certainly can illustrate the extremes. Traveling through a typical modern subdivision, we consider these very nice homes, very nice lifestyle. We're now half a mile out of Jacksboro on 25W or the Appalachian Highway headed into La Follette. 100 years ago, there was not a single house on this stretch. Today, it's practically uh, inhabited with either residents or businesses or industry all the way. Still just the one main street through here. Also, before the interstate was built, this was the main north-south connecting route with the industrial north all the way into the south. Slightly to the left of center, with building with the spire, is the Church of God. You will note, unfortunately, in the ditch line, considerable litter. We're having a problem with litter, but that's not one of the things that we're proud of, and we hope that long before you have to come to grips with it, the problem has been solved. Our car count on this particular stretch of road, traffic count, is already already exceeds 30,000 vehicles per day, and it's just about at max capacity. This year, we've asked the State Department of Transportation to do a feasibility study, and if it appears feasible, then an engineering study to select a bypass route uh, around La Follette and this congested area that we've just traveled. Now at what those of my generation call the Richie Cream Hill, looking east into downtown La Follette. Fleet building, or Piedmont building, it used to have a third story on it, destroyed by fire, remodeled as a two-story building. Now houses La Follette Auto Parts, some lawyers' offices, and a variety of other offices. This is our, one of our two radio stations, WLAF, the oldest of the radio stations in La Follette. It is an AM radio station and also has a uh, TV channel. Proceeding out of downtown La Follette, continuing on the Appalachian Highway, headed up Powell Valley toward Cumberland Gap. Straight ahead, you can b begin to see the La Follette Medical Complex. Most of us call it the La Follette Hospital contains uh, several clinics. It is a full-service medical center. We're well served by two of these in Campbell County, this one in the Jellicoe Community Hospital. Uh, this one's being upgraded this year to add to its present uh, nursing home and assisted living facility. Chubby's Drive-In is a new effort to capture some of the nostalgia of the 50s. Now seeing the outskirts of the La Follette Country Club, we're now taking a tour around the La Follette Country Club, paralleling the fairway to number two. And indeed, here are some of our fine citizens enjoying a round of golf. This is Eastgate Mall. Re-entering Appalachian Highway, continuing east up Powell Valley, and of course here's our largest building in Campbell County, 240,000 square feet on the left, DeRoyal Industries. That building was the mainstay in employment as a garment processing plant, a shirt factory. At its peak, employed 1,400 basically ladies 
uh, closed about eight years ago, and that, with the collapse of the coal, in, or simultaneous with the collapse of the coal industry, plunged Campbell County into the highest unemployment uh, in the last hundred years. We're now about a half a mile out of La Follette and entering what we'll call the open spaces of beautiful Powell Valley. Uh, none of us can predict how long these will remain open spaces, but as you can see, very beautiful part of the country, some beautiful homes. There are still some large farms through here. The open spaces to the left is one of the larger of the remaining farms in Campbell County. There's probably 250 acres in this track. There is a white uh, semicircular building on a hilltop that was moved there by the owners of this piece of property who were prominent in the coal industry, moved there as the old commissary from White Oak, now made into a horse barn. of our new Christian Academy. A lot of dedicated people have worked and contributed to this, and we have high hopes that it'll be a, a very significant educational institution in Campbell County. Coming into view is another one of our antebellum houses. This one also on the historic register. This is the old Doc Howard House, or officially listed as the Dr. P.T. Howard House. Presently, owned and occupied by Luke and Becky Kirkland. The house was built by slaves, so is the rock fence around it, and were, so were the old stone barns that surround it. Dr. Howard ran a doctor's office and an in-house infirmary here for years, and indeed was the only doctor in the, in the area during perhaps a 50-year period of time. He made house calls and as with many uh, country doctors was paid by means of barter, chicken, fatback, sack of corn, and if there was no pay he would still deliver the service. Most of us in this area, including this narrator, were delivered at birth in our homes by Dr. Howard. Great. That's the old car house. That house also is on the National Register. Edwin. Carr, father of our former historian Sonny Carr, occupied that house until his death last year. Turning out into the Glade Spring section of Finn Castle, one of the earliest developments in Powell Valley, Glade Springs Baptist Church, one of the oldest churches in Campbell County. Obviously remodeled, but in its original site, and some of the structure is original. This Glade Springs Baptist Church was one of the oldest ones in the area. As this plaque indicates, it was established in 1797, just one year after Tennessee became a state. It's indeed fitting that this become a part of our bicentennial celebration, the church being 199 years old. Still in the Fincastle section, we've just moved from the old highway back over to the Appalachian Highway stop to look at a new development on the Cumberland Mountains. This view and this shot will perhaps be the most graphic as it relates to future developments of anything we've taken today. The mountain presents itself in its original majesty, perhaps unchanged since the beginning of time. Yet this year, one of our local developers who has been a particular visionary with some of his other developments on Norris Lake has tackled the top of the mountain and has built two houses on the Tennessee Valley Divide overlooking Powell Valley and has two others under construction and another site. 
The next that uh, he has planned, I believe, something in excess of a hundred house development, and on north of that, the vision of a golf course, lake complex, uh, truly luxury living. It would be indeed interesting if we could stand here today and visualize what that might look like 100 years from now, but we've given you at least the advantage of knowing what it looked like at its beginning. Hey, we're looking at a, at a dry pond or lake bed that's uh, a part of the Norris Dam complex. It was originally built, I think the CCC's built this dam, and it's been used at least in my lifetime as a hatchery and a place to store fish for the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. We're at the extreme east end of the county now crossed over from the uh, new Appalachian Highway back over to old 63. This is typical of an old, uh, or at least of my generation, or the pre preceding generations, General Merchandise Country Store. This store has been here as long as I can remember. It's had perhaps six or seven changes in owners, but still one of the area country stores that you'll find throughout the county. And we've just re-entered the county from the east, traveling west. This is known uh, as the little farm, the little mansion, uh, the Mars place, presently owned and restored and maintained by Paul and Judy Rice. It is rumored to be inhabited by ghosts. Apparently they're the friendly type. They do rattle chains and move furniture and do things that would alarm you but apparently have not attempted to bring any harm to anyone and are tolerated simply as nice friendly ghosts. It's something that hasn't always been around and largely has come into Campbell County during my lifetime and still isn't all over the county. So several of our families still use privies or outhouses and here's a shot of one, and by way of contrast, to show that it can coexist with technology, that TV tower uh, is probably uh, one of the state-of-the-art. The log yard in the distance is a transfer point from harvest to the wood products that are going into Kentucky. Forest products have been a mainstay in the industry of the area since the pioneers came and in fact figures very heavily into the economic plans for the next 100 years. Coal is represented by those mountains in the background, still rich in coal, and will probably, a lot of, a lot of that will probably be extracted over the course of the next 100 years. And then to the left is an old tobacco barn where tobacco is cut and hung there to cure before it's graded, transported to the market for further refinement and processing. Perhaps coal, agriculture, or the uh, timber industry, tobacco, and I just mentioned beef cattle are the four pillars on the stool of industry in Campbell County in our past. Sorts of houses in Tennessee, we've seen the luxurious, and here's some on the other end of the spectrum. As you can see from looking at these cattle, they're all different kinds cattle that show evidence of being Charlay, uh, a good many that show evidence of being Angus. Uh, some of them look like they've got Kianina heads on them. Uh, some of them are so mixed up you can't tell what they are, but they're a typical herd of, of cattle that you might find on any beef cattle farm in Powell Valley, Campbell County, Tennessee. We're still in the Powell Valley section. This is Valley View School. The school itself is well over a hundred years old and has served as hundred, oh, just thousands and thousands of children. Uh, this is a one of three major school building projects that's ongoing this year, will be completed in our bicentennial year, adding uh, 16 new classrooms to the existing structure. Now, still in the Val Valley View community headed toward Fincastle, is named the Smith Souter Farm. It's still one of the larger farm properties. It, too, is on the historic register as a restored uh, residence of note. Recently 
purchased and is being restored and maintained by Cooster and Edith Smith, prominent Campbell County citizens. The view of the old Filet House, which is certainly a famous landmark here, it's the original home of the person who founded and laid out this town. We're looking at it more or less from the south or looking toward the north or northeast at the house. It's, uh, as you can see, two-story and well-preserved and hopefully might survive until, until your time. If not, uh, we're glad for you to have a look at the founder's house of the city of Lafayette looking at the construction of the new Jellicoe High School, a project that all of us in government, at least, and in the school system, along with the city officials, and particularly the students, are very proud of. This high school will serve over 500 students in this area for uh, probably the next 50 years. Scheduled for completion during the summer of 1996, again a project that we're proud of during this centennial year. Another source of both service and pride during this year is the progress at the Jellicoe Community Hospital. They're in the middle of about a four and a half million dollar renovation. This hospital uh, provides expert and, and professional family health care to Jellicoe, Northern Campbell County, Southern Kentucky, and has a service area of probably 15,000. This is the only medical facility in Campbell County where we provide full obstetric services now. Of course, Jellicoe Community Hospital is rapidly expanding into several area clinics that will serve Campbell County and Southern Kentucky. Very proud of Ken Madison, a hospital administrator. He does a super professional job over here, as does the rest of the medical staff. This uh, is the headquarters of the Church of God of Mountain Assembly. And now this white building is the original Church of God of Mountain Assembly headquarters. And the moderating assembly was held there for several years. We're in the Indian Mountain State Park in Jellicoe. This is a particular success story in that this park evolved from the reclamation of a strip mine. Like Cove Lake State Park with its waterways, this one serves also as the habitat for Canadian geese. I believe that this flock is resident, but we do have migratory flocks that visit here. You can see the little lake that's been created here for recreational purposes. It's a beautiful park. We're exiting Jellicoe toward Elk Valley, about a mile out of town. And here is the local radio station, WJJT, 1540 on your dial, providing a community and recreational service to the area of Jellicoe. Looking at the building occupied last year by Doherty Manufacturing Company, a textile firm that hires approximately 125 people, the building across the road from this was a speculation building built seven years ago by seven or eight concerned citizens attempting to attract industry and this year 1996 by July it will be occupied by Taylor Machines from Michigan and will provide uh, high quality jobs initially for about 60 folks. This is the Jellicoe Municipal Building houses the all elements of the Jellicoe government, the fire department, police department, city government. Jellicoe is a small mountain town, well governed. Looking down Main Street toward Kentucky, uh, Kentucky state line is just about one block beyond the area that you see. This section of town is virtually unchanged in my generation. This was Highway 25W, the main connecting link. When you arrive at the corner, turn left, you're going toward the Follett. Virtually 90% of the traffic from the north to the south came this route. Judge Asbury and I are standing in front of the Jellicoe Veterans Memorial. This was uh, dedicated by the Veterans Committee here in Jellicoe last year to the World War II, Korea, and Vietnam veterans of particular interest 
And this is the only place that I know that these folks have been memorialized. The Jellicoe Troop Train Accident, the uh, greatest peacetime tragedy during World War II occurred here in Jellicoe, and they have included those soldiers that were killed here in Campbell County. They invited the families of those people here for the dedication. It was a great ceremony, and it's a great tribute to the citizens of Jellicoe to have done uh, such a thing. We're directly south of Jellicoe, looking toward La Follette on 25W. The interchange you see here is the first interchange in Tennessee, southbound on uh, Interstate 75. We have no idea what this will look like a hundred years from now. We're about five and a half miles probably south of the city of Jellicoe, southbound on 25W, and this time we're on the right side of the road looking to the west in an area that for generations has uh, had a reputation for having the purest, most pristine natural mountain spring water uh, available anywhere in the in the southeast, certainly in this area. It's been a landmark. Folks that travel this area from the north know about it, will stop, get a jug of water. <coughs> Actually, it's a source of litter as well. We're uh, hoping that future generations will be more, better environmental stewards than we've been. We send prisoners up here about every two months to clean it up, and unfortunately, it will be littered again within a week. We're not proud of that, and we wish you folks greater success than we've had. We've moved a couple of hundred yards south on 25, still looking back toward the mouth of no business. We stopped here in order that you might get a view of these beautiful rock formations. This gorge section between La Follette and Jellicoe along the Clear Fork River is one of the most scenic and beautiful routes in the United States. You might see something that is as pretty as this, but you won't see anything any prettier. We'll let the camera do the talking now. They were just a quarter mile off of 25W viewing the new Wynn Habersham School, one of the three major school projects that we're undertaking this year. To the left of the structure, you can see the old section of the school that will be torn down next summer, uh, summer of 96, when this one is ready to be occupied. In addition to having a dilapidated building, they had an uh, unsafe water supply here in conjunction with another water grant project, we were able to extend the water, uh, city water from La Follette, all the way into here. And then by community action, several other grants, and some county money, we have extended uh, uh, city water to this little community. If you'll cross the creek, Adrian, and look to the left, you'll see about 16 little houses in here that we're able to pick up water as a result of this. I think it would be appropriate to mention at this point that we consider, by way of infrastructure, a safe water supply as perhaps our most critical problem in 1996. And we're attempting to the tune of a half a million dollars a year to continue to extend water in a planned fashion all over the county. Hopefully, in 2096, we will have solved the problem before you have to come to grips with it. This is a landmark event for the bicentennial. Today, January 1st, 1996, is the year that we will occupy a brand new health clinic in Campbell County. We will occupy this within the next couple of months, probably in February 96. Uh, we're very proud of it. It's a facility that's built with uh, grant funds, federal, state, and local. We've purchased the property here very close to the courthouse. We're about a half a mile south of the courthouse between the Appalachian Highway and the old Jacksboro Highway. And we envision that this facility will serve the citizens of Campbell County, particularly uh, our low-income citizens, for the next 60 years and provide quality health care.
I'm Arliss Chapman, the, the elected school superintendent of Campbell County. I'd like to speak to you on some things that it concerns our education program to be put in the time capsule in 2096. We have 17 schools in our school system, three middle schools, three high schools, and 11 elementary schools. We also so have four preschool programs to prepare children ages three to four to enter the kindergarten that would make them more successful when they enter school. We have a school budget of $27 million. In Campbell County, we're an educational system on wheels. We have 43 buses that travel over 2,000 miles a day. We transport over two-thirds of our students to Campbell County. We feel good about our school system in Campbell County. We know we have problems, but we know where the problems are, and we're continually working on them to try to improve. Greetings, Time Capsule. My name's J.J. Dower, chairman of the Campbell County Democratic Party. Tell you a little bit about our local leaders here in town. Uh, other members of the Democratic Party are Norman Johnstone, our former rester at large here for more than 20 years, serves as a vice chairman. Carl Baird, former school superintendent, is also a uh, vice chairman of the party. Joanne Watts Jellicoe is currently our treasurer of the party, and Joanne Wallace of LaFaude is our secretary of the Democratic Party. Local Democratic officials elected in the county through the Democratic Party are Sheriff Ron McClellan, County Trustee Monty Bullock, Road Superintendent J.T. Leach, currently serving his fourth term, and School Superintendent Arliss Chapman. We're also very fortunate in Campbell County to have had our own uh, Democratic State Representative, Jerry Cross from Carroll, serving us for the past 12 years, currently seeking another term. Uh, also, uh, during the past 12 years, lots of things have changed here during the past time. Uh, we, for the last 12 years until the 94 election, we had our own congressman, two United States senators, and a governor. Of course, during the last election, that all uh, changed. So our current, current goals for the local party as well as the state party is maybe this time in the 96th upcoming election to keep our president, maybe hopefully re-elect a congressman, and achieve some other office by keeping uh, our representative Jerry Cross in Nashville working for us. We want to thank you for taking the time to view this and hope you open it up in 100 years from now. 2096. My name is Ann Ayers and I'm chairman of the Campbell County Republican Party. Standing here with me, we're very happy to have Barbara McAndrews, who is president of the Tennessee Republican Women's Club. And to my left, I have Dolores Bartley, who is our former president of the Campbell County Republican Women's Club. To my right is Tracy Powers, who is our incoming president of the Republican Women's Club for 1996-97. We're happy to be here in a free country where we have the right and privilege to do as we please, to come and go as we please, and we feel so fortunate to be a part of this great, we want to forget our state committee woman, Juanita Baird. She's been active in the state party for 20 years and in the Campbell County Republican Party since the day it first began. Greetings, 2096 from Campbell County. I just want to say how much, uh, what a pleasure it's been for me to serve in this capacity, and I just hope that in 2096, this party's going to be going stronger every year. Thank you. We're in a different section of the county today to show you another aspect of life in Campbell County. We're going into the Deerfield Resort section, one of several build-up areas that's rapidly becoming a recreational and a retirement community. That's an industry that we think uh, per perhaps holds greater hopes for our economic and social future here in Campbell County than anything else that we're doing. Deerfield is very, very interesting. Uh, created by developer Paul and Madeline Fields. This is the entrance to a beautiful 18-hole golf course with plans to make it an even bigger golf course. Uh, there is an airport at the top of the hill. You can fly in, get onto your golf, court, uh, golf cart from at the, out of your airplane and into the golf cart and come down to the clubhouse. Hi, I'm Jim Fields, uh, one of the owners here at Deerfield, and we're just starting our second year of operation in here, our golf course here, and we feel like it's going to be a very successful operation. And next to me is... I'm Mark Laws, and I work here at Deerfield. work for Bill, golf pro who's next to me. 
Hi, I'm Bill Rendell. I just came in last year from Indiana. We're here to take over and run this fine establishment we will have, and I hope to see you in, when is it? 2096. 2096. I hope they figure it out. We're young enough to be there. <laughs>